Welcome to Chem Exam Explained, where the aim is chemistry clarity, exam mastery. In today's video, we will be looking at Cape Chemistry Unit 1, 2022, Module 2, Kinetics and Equilibria. Let's go. So 2A, a colorless liquid is extracted from ants and the liquid is found to have a pH of 4.2. Part one, define the term pH. Well, you could define it using the formula or define it using words. With the formula, pH is equal to minus log H plus concentration. Or pH is a logarithmic measure of the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution. Part two, calculate the hydrogen ion concentration of the colorless liquid. Now, if we know the pH, we could use the formula H plus concentration equal 10 to the minus pH. So we just simply plug the value where pH is. So that's minus 4.2, and then we find the value. So H plus is equal to 6.3 times 10 to the minus five moles per dm cube. 2A part three. 20 cm cube of a solution with the same pH as that of the extracted colorless liquid is placed in a flask. The pH of the solution is monitored as 1 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per dm cube aqueous solution. Sodium hydroxide is added. Sketch the titration curve that will be obtained. Now, if you look at the graph, you'll see that the pH starts low. The substance that the pH meter is in is acidic. So if the pH meter is here, then you are adding the pH meter in the acid H+, plus. then it starts low. Now, as you add sodium hydroxide from the burette, the pH will increase until you have a sharp rise in the pH. And that would be your equivalence point. So if you look at this drawing here and what is happening here, so if you look at where the graph starts, the pH is about 4.2. So after you monitor the pH using sodium hydroxide, and you add sodium hydroxide, which is OH minus, neutralizing the H plus, you have a rise in pH until it becomes alkaline. And so the graph would have pH on the y-axis and volume of sodium hydroxide on the x-axis. The equivalence point for this titration would be about 8.2 to 10. That is your equivalence point. Part four. Table three shows a list of indicators and pH ranges. Here we have the indicator or the indicators, phenaphthalene, bromethamyl blue, methyl red, and the pH ranges corresponding to the indicator. Suggest with reason which indicator is most suitable for use in the titration in part three. Phenaphthalene is most suitable because, based on the curve, the equivalence point falls approximately between 8.2 to 10 pH. Remember that the acid was a weak acid and the alkaline was a strong base. And when you, whenever you are doing a titration with a weak acid and a strong base, phenaphthalene is the most suitable indicator. Part B1. Define the term rate of reaction. Now, rate of reaction can be defined as the time taken for reactant concentration to change to product. That is, change in reactant concentration over time. Part two, explain how the following factors may affect the rate of a chemical reaction. Catalyst. Now, catalyst speeds up the reaction rate by lowering the activation energy. It does so by providing an alternate route for the reaction to proceed, surface area. Surface area increase the rate of reaction 
by increasing the frequency of effective collision, that is, collision with sufficient energy and correct orientation. 2. Part C. An investigation of the rate of reaction between peroxodisulfate ions and iodide ions provides some experimental data in Table 4. Now here you have the table. We have three experiments. We have the initial concentration of the peroxidisulfate ions. We have the initial concentration of the iodide ions. And we have the initial rate of the reactions for the three experiments. Now the equation for the reaction is the peroxidisulfate ion plus the iodide ion produces sulfate ions and triiodide ions. So this is our equation. Now the rate of a reaction is dependent on the reactant concentration. So we are focusing on what is happening here in the reactants and not the products. So the first thing we're going to do is study S2O8 while keeping I minus constant and then examining what is happening with the rate of the reaction. So if we're studying S2O8, we're going to look at what is happening with the initial concentration. So you see where we went from 0.05 to 0 0.10. Now, a simple way to do it is to divide 0.1 by 0 0.05, which is equal to 2. What this is saying is that the reaction or the initial concentration for S2O8, 2 minus, doubled. Now, if that doubled while the I minus is kept constant, we must now check what is happening to the rate because what happens to the rate of the reaction is dependent on the reactant concentration that is changing. Now, if the initial concentration doubles and the rate doubles, then it is first order. So if you say 0.1 divided by 0 0.05 equal 2, this is saying that the initial concentration of S2O8 2 minus doubled. And if we check the rate, we then say 3.0 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to 2, then we can see that the rate itself also doubled. If initial count double and the rate doubles, then it is first order. We are now going to study the initial concentration of I minus while keeping S2O8 2 minus constant. So here we keep S2O8 constant and we see what is happening to the rate. Now here we keep S2O8 2 minus constant and we check what is happening to the initial concentration of I minus ion. If we go from 0 0.1 to 0 0.05, then you can see that the initial concentration for I minus was half. Now the rate would be dependent on the initial concentration of I minus ions. And if you check that, you also see that we went from 3.0 times 10 to the minus 5 to 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5, which is saying that the initial rate of the reaction is halved as well. So if the initial concentration of a reactant is halved and the rate is halved, it is also first order. You could check by simply dividing 0 0.05 by 0 0.1, that is 0 0.5, which means that it was halved. If you check the initial rate of the reaction for experiments 2 and 3, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by 3.0 times 10 to the minus 5 equals 0 0.5, which also means that the rate was halved, therefore first order. Now, if we know the order with respect to S2O8, to minus and the order with respect to I minus, we can now move to part two, where based on the answer in C1, we can now de determine the overall order of the reaction. All we need to do is add both orders. So first order plus first order equals second order. Part three, determine the rate law for the reaction. 
Now, rate is directly proportional to the reactant concentrations. So here, the rate law is rate is equal to the constant K times the concentration of S2OA2 minus raised to the first power, but we don't show the one, times the concentration of I minus raised to the first power. Again, we don't show the power when, when it is raised to one. And this is your rate law for the reaction. Part D1, define the term standard electrode potential of a half cell. This is the potential of that half cell relative to the standard hydrogen electrode under standard condition. Now the standard hydrogen electrode is your reference electrode and we call it she. Part two, draw a label diagram to show how the standard electrode potential of the iron three slash iron two plus aqueous half cell can be determined. Now what we do is we draw the half cell for the standard hydrogen electrode, showing that hydrogen is going into your platinum electrode with one atmosphere and at 298 Kelvin. The concentration of the acid is one moles per dm cube because it is under standard condition. The other half cell is now your iron two plus three plus solution with a platinum electrode immersed. And now you have your salt bridge that connects or completes the circuits and prevent charge buildup. You must also have your voltmeter, which will give you the potential difference reading. That is your diagram for part two. This is the end of module two, chemistry 2022.